actor components are really nice in that they make your game modular and flexible. So you can derive from public view actor component or beneath scene component or primitive component for things that need a scene hierarchy. And so in this example, I just made a fake health system component. So we're going to throw this component on any old actor. And I wanted to show how easy it is to acquire this component based off an actor without knowing necessarily if it has a health system component. For that, we should add it to an actual actor though. So if I go into this simple actor here, I can go to the components and do add health system. So now we've added this health system component, can set the data on it and blueprint. So in code, I've set up a simple console command here to do command test find components. And I have a delegate binding directly to this function for testing. And so I'm going to use an actor iterator over the simple actors and note that we added that component in blueprint. In code, there's nothing added to this native parent class. So we're going to be able to query the components that are added in blueprint in code. And so we're just doing a simple actor iterator since this is just a test. And for every one of these actors, we will convert that iterator into the actual actor. And then we'll ask the actor for the component by its class. And so this function here finds the first component in the array of components lists and returns that component. From the simple actor, we ask it for the component, the health component. And if it has a health component, so it's not null, then we'll do the system stuff, which is just a function that does nothing right now. And we'll log that it actually had one. We'll just set a breakpoint right here and test that. And if I go to the command, copy the command, execute, we can see that we hit our breakpoint. If I step over it, we can see that it actually returns a valid health system component. And that is a really easy way to just build system components and throw them on any old actor. You can just ask it for this component. So if it has one, you can do stuff with it. And if it doesn't, then you probably don't care. So that makes it really easy to build modular features that are compositable instead of relying on inheritance with actors. However, this find components by class, if we go digging into it, eventually we'll see that it's doing a, an iteration over the own components. In Gen source code, it's just ultimately doing an iteration over the components and checking if it's a target class and returning it if so. So you might be concerned with that performance if you have a whole lot of components. And if you are, you can check out what they did in the ability system. So if we go to that header, ability system interface, all I've done is set up a really lightweight interface that defines a virtual function that returns the ability system component. So you can set up these interfaces instead of using the find component by class, and you would just cast it to the interface. And then if the cast passes, you request the component via the virtual function call. However, in most cases, it's probably fine to do the find components by class. It just depends on the game and where you're doing this and how performance critical the code is. There's also a different version of Git components. So there's Git components, and this one is plural, whereas the find component by class is singular. So this one will return an array of components. And if we look, there is this T inline component array. Ultimately, this is just a T array that's has some inline allocator with a certain number of elements. So that means this is most likely going to put it on the stack rather than doing some heap allocation to make it a little bit faster. And it looks like they have defined that to be 24 by default. So you can use this T inline component array with Git components, but it's a template. It doesn't really actually care what you provided. So in this case, we haven't added any skeletal mesh components to the simple actor, but I will go and add that. So if we go into here, we can just add some skeletal mesh components. So we've added two of them. And if I put a breakpoint here, pile this, let me run the command. We can see that our component array filled up with two skeletal meshes, which are the ones we added in Blueprint, not in code. So we iterate over those and print them. And so that's how you can really easily use components to make modular actors and avoid inheritance. Leave a comment if you have any questions, and until next time.